Hi guys, I'm going to be reading for you Livestock on Market Street by Matt De La Pena, and the pictures are by Christian Robinson. CJ pushed through the church doors and skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus and all of this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, never seeing a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in and gave CJ a wave and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, we don't need a car. We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the doors swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear and placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ on along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar and an old woman who was curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped and mm, Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here at the church, CJ said. Miguel and Kobe never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man, and I hear Trixie got herself a new brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by either side and watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog and CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact, their noses too, the man said, sniffing the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed a deep, hearty laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in the back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana sat down her, start, sat down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man to play you a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of the music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ up out of the bus and out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of pure magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes and everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm and CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop, Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. 
CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over the soup kitchen, and he wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamps that still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted the familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep, hearty laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, me too. Now come on. The end. Thank you guys. This story um, reminds me of what it feels like to be a kid. It reminds me of what it feels like to have so many questions and it also reminds me, and as an adult, how those creative question answers as kids, how they affect us as we grow up and how we see things in beautiful ways. I encourage each of you young ones to take a moment, step outside and see something beyond what's there. See the beautiful in life. One love y'all.